Hello, friends of Skelevator. Thanks for tuning in again. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at the Masterverse New Eternia Beastman. If you like these videos, please click like and subscribe and click that little alert button so you can be notified each time a new video pops up. But yeah, uh, my wife got this new Eternia Beastman for me for Father's Day, and I couldn't be happier. He's been showing up in targets um, in very small batches. So if you see one out there, folks, uh, grab him. I'm really excited about the other figures, too, that are coming out in this line. Here are the numbers for you if you need them. Okay, you can go ahead and put push pause and, and take that down. So let's get this guy open. Um, I I can't I can't I can't emphasize enough how excited I am about the design of this guy. Now it's great that they include um, elements of the original figure. So here's his sort of neck piece with his blue medallion that is very reminiscent of the vintage action figure. And of course, it comes with a bunch of extra stuff, which is very cool. This this like toothy club, it, I've never seen it before, so that's a nice new item. And then the whip, of course, which is very reminiscent of the original figure. I like the sort of more modernized handle that they gave it too. Um, <clears throat> I do want to point out here that you might be able to see it here with the hands that there's a that the plastic underneath the paint wash is a very bright orange plastic which pops through or shows through especially when sunlight hits it which is really great um, so I'll, eventually I'll take some photographs of this guy out in the wild and you'll be able to see how the sun really the orange really pops when the sun hits it right um, but this uh, this armor or this fuzz the fuzzy shoulders the spiky armor all of this is very cool the face sculpt is reminiscent of the original sort of the paint applications of the original beast man action figure which is awesome to see I've always loved that whenever um, a version of beast man strays from that I get a little disappointed that skull is phenomenal the paint application is clean and the sculpt is great. Now I want to point out that the the design of that furry armor and we're going to look at the bear head in a little bit is based on Mark Taylor's original design of Beast Man, Ursus Prime, and you can find images of that Ursus Prime design uh, online or in the Power and the Honor Foundation book. Now, the design element I'm not too keen on here is the loincloth, um, that extra piece of fabric that's in the front. And I was hoping that it would be removable, but it's not. And people have been complaining about the feet, but the feet don't bother me at all. Um, I, in fact, the feet are a great, they're, they're the perfect size for him to stand up and not topple over. His joints are nice and tight too, so that really helps. But that loincloth, I wish there was a way to remove that front um, sort of tribal design piece of fabric there. You can, however, uh, remove the Mark Taylor influenced design armor with the furry shoulder pieces. You can remove that and it comes off fairly easily. I suggest removing the head just because it's a nice tight fit around the neck um, and you'll have less trouble getting that off if you do it that way. Let's take a look here at the torso. The first thing that stood out to me was that the, the wash is pretty heavy on the torso which bothers me, but not as much as this extraordinary gap between where the shoulders and the, the, the top part of the arm meets. Um, it's pretty wide there. It's, it's wider on the right arm, it seems, than on the left arm, as you can see here. And it's a, it, I get a little nervous because that peg in there feels fairly thin, um, but it seems pretty sturdy. Uh, but that gap kind of bothers me a little bit. When you put the armor on, the gap is not as visible. You stand him at an angle for like your toy photography or when you have him on the shelf um, and it's not as visible. But that did kind of, that did kind of bother me a little bit. It seems like they, they uh, maybe could have taken a little bit more time to create a sculpt that allowed the shoulder to sit into the socket a little bit more. Um, and you know what, I've seen also online people, if the paint application on the torso bothers you, that sort of darker or muted orange, um, you can actually uh, find online some techniques to remove that extra layer of wash, which I think I might try and do. He comes with a, with a few extra hands here, which we're putting in there. And of course they always fit nice and tight. 
I can always, uh, so far, you know, so far so good, I can pretty much count on these masterverse figures to have tight joints. And when the, when the additional pieces, you fit them in there, they fit nice and tight. And I love the way this guy looks with his traditional armor. And I really do think, unless I can find a, another one of him at a very reasonable price, I think I'm gonna try and keep him in his traditional armor. Um, just because for nostal you know, for nostalgic purposes, that's the one, that's the style that I really prefer. The more I study Mark Taylor's original designs, the more of an appreciation I have for it. So I'm really happy that Mattel gave us that option. Here he is with that uh, giant club. Um, and it's, it's good, it's good. I really prefer the whip, but the club is a kind of a nice, nice addition. Very reminiscent of like, uh, the Walking Dead, like Negan's uh, baseball bat a little bit there. Um, the, so this figure is really fantastic. Um, and I absolutely love everything about this guy, except for maybe that gap in the shoulders. The, the, the paint application on the torso bothers me less than the shoulder gap. And I know that some of you out there have been feeling the same way. So it's become Skelevator tradition to switch out the heads with the Origins um, body, the Origins head, put them on the Masterverse body, the Masterverse head. So here I am trying out the Origins head of the, of the new Beastman from Origins on the Masterverse body and the Masterverse head on the Origins body. I kind of love the way this looks. It usually doesn't work so well if you put the Masterverse head on the Origins body, but because Beastman's a bigger figure, the head doesn't look so small on the Origins body here. It kind of looks great. Of course, it would need a paint job to match the brighter orange of the Origins figure, which would be a cool uh, uh, project to do. Um, this, though, really kind of blows my mind. If you get the right angle, there's sort of a strange separation between where the, the head meets the neck, but the the way this looks on the Masterverse New Eternia Beastman body, the Origins head, looks really good. Um, and of course, it doesn't look so great with the uh, the other, although that's pretty cool too. Sorry, I'm just like thinking about it as I'm, as I'm watching this video again. It kind of looks cool too. So this is a really fun thing to do with your Masterverse figures and your Origins figures. And, you know, most of the time it might require some additional um, paint if you want to match the colors a little bit more. But man, it's a lot of fun. And I find it extremely rewarding. Um, some of those... Uh, Origins heads, as we've seen in previous videos, really look better than some of the Masterverse heads on the Masterverse bodies. Anyways, um, here's my here are my Beast Men hanging out together. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to click like and subscribe, and uh, and you know click that a little alert button down at the bottom, and I'll see you in the next video.